Our next speaker, uh, I think pretty much everybody's familiar with, is uh, Rich Carlson um, from New Jersey Aquatic Safety Coalition, and he's going to be talking about the New Jersey, <coughs> excuse me, public bathing uh, codes and regulations rela related to hiring lifeguards, which obviously is a very timely topic for all of us. So I'm going to turn the mic over to Rich. All right. Good morning. Everyone can hear me, right? Yeah. So I don't have to order. I use my inside voice, my outside voice, whatever. So, uh, yeah, my lifeguard voice, there we go, all right? So I don't need the microphone, because when I start using the microphone, I'm going to start singing karaoke like my granddaughter, and she's, she's horrible, so we're not going to do that. And uh, today's menu has been changed from president under glass to uh, geese under glass, all right, for the restaurant. All right, so we have our uh, new state regulations that are coming up. We have the labor hours for minors and also a minimum wage increases that, that kick in again this year uh, as of January 1st. And then voting regulations, which um, our guests, uh, state police are gonna come in here and they're gonna talk about that right after me, all right? Um, so the labor regulations for minors has changed, it changed last year, and increases the number of hours from 15 to seven, uh, 16 to 17 year olds can work now 40 hours to 50 hours, all right? And that's only during vacation time on, only during summer vacation. So instead of scheduling 40, now you can schedule 50. However, they can only work six days in a row. That's it, you have to give them that seventh day off. You know, like God rested, they have to rest too, all right? So that's what they're gonna have to do. Doesn't that um, include you can increase the shifts from five hours to six. Yes, sir? Doesn't that include all employment so if they have another job? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah. and not just lifeguards. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and, and if they're working at Burger King or whatever like that, okay? So I used to be able to, that they added like five hour shifts, all right? And I can go up to six hour shifts. However, you have to give them a half hour break, all right, for a meal break in there, all right? Um, they can't work more than six days in a row. And the working papers, okay? So remember how we talk about working papers that you have, that you have to go to the school? All right, that's still in existence. However, they may. Well, I gotta be on camera. <laughs> I have to be on camera. All right. I guess to show that I'm here. All right. You know what? My wife retired January 1st, all right, from 50 years in the operating room. So now she's home with me all the time now, right? So I retired like 10 years ago, 13 years ago. So, you know, she made the mistake that I never, ever would have made. Is this all you do? <laughs> all right. Uh, so I have to like show where I am at, at, all, at all time. Um, so working papers, they're still required, all right, but they can be ac accessed now on a state website. You don't have to go to the schools, all right? And the form is a A300. So now what happens is they have to have working papers though, um, but they have to have those working papers for every job. So if they work in a, two jobs, if they work in like a Burger King and then they're working at like, uh, like Mohawk, they have to have separate working papers for like Mohawk and for um, for the Burger King, all right? So um, anybody under the age of 18, they have to have an employment certificate, what's called basically working papers, all right? Um, and you need one for each job, like we said. And you can get these online now. They're, make, they're making it very easy because what happens is some of the schools are closed over the summer and they can't get these working papers, so they can get them online, all right? However, the problem that you have is this. All right, a designated school official has to review the form. All right, so now you got to track down who this designated official is. All right, sometimes it could be just a custodian. You know, you know, you just have to knock on the door and try to find someone just sign this form for me, will you? And once satisfied that the work conditions and hours will not interfere with students' education, that damages students' uh, health, they'll they're going to pretty, pretty much approve the form. But they can also not approve the form, and then that's going to hold it up. All right. Uh, the only thing that usually holds this up is usually that a delay in trying to get somebody to sign the papers, yes. If they have two jobs, Burger King and the lifeguarding, is the hours combined total or is it for each job? That I do not know. Okay. I don't think so. No. so. All right, so all right, then our, our minimum wage just went up. All right, so the minimum wage this year is, Tom, is this the, uh, well, i just go right here. This is actually fourteen thirteen an hour, fourteen dollars and thirteen cents. For some reason, uh, Governor Murphy decided to give a thirteen cent increase on the minimum wage this year, so that's uh, fourteen dollars and thirteen cents now. And that twelve seventy is actually twelve seven 
twelve dollars and thirteen cents rather than twelve seventy. I don't know why they did that. He lowered the he lowered the minimum wage for fewer than six employees, but he raised it for everybody else, thirteen cents. Yeah. All, right? Pay that, you'll have zero All right. Now next year, you know, we're gonna hit the fifteen and then it's gonna be fifteen for, for like you know, until they start raising it again. All right. But we have to know that, that the twenty out twenty dollar an hour lifeguard is here. All right. White, uh, what is it? Uh, Walmart is starting at seventeen dollars an hour. Burger King starting at seventeen fifty. Lowe's is seventeen fifty an hour. Everyone's starting at like seventeen, seventeen fifty an hour. All right. Think about this: the certification that you need to become a lifeguard. All right, you don't need a certification to to work at Burger King or to work at Walmart or to work at Lowe's or to work anywhere else. Okay. There's no real liability in a burnt hamburger. Okay, but there is for you know, lifeguarding, okay? These guys, these kids have to pay like 250 to $300 for a lifeguarding class. Why is charging like 375 now, all right, for a lifeguarding class, which we're gonna talk about a little bit in a minute. Um, so, I mean, they have to have certification, all right, um, to become a lifeguard. So they have to take that before they get the job. So the $20 an hour lifeguard is here, all right? All right, so the training and certifications. So the waterfront lifeguarding training and in-service schedule that we usually have, I usually have it for you now. We have not, we, we haven't put it together yet. We're gonna have it together for like April, all right? And we'll distribute it at the April, I'll send it to Eileen so she can distribute it uh, by email or if we have it out before the meeting. Otherwise, we should have it by the meeting, uh, for the next meeting and, and so you'll have your uh, basic certification. We're going to hopefully, um, depending on, on what happens here, <laughs> We usually research your uh, your lifeguards. All right? We do it at our cost, all right? So whatever costs us. So it's not like you have to pay $125. I heard that it was $125 at the Y for, for lifeguard research. And then uh, 225 at other places to, to research your lifeguards. Ridiculous, all right? We only charge, I think, I think we just raised it to $80 or $90, all right, for research, all right? So, Send your guards to us. The only problem is that you have to make sure as long as we have room, that's it. So usually a couple of lakes take advantage of this. We usually you know, we have like maybe, I don't think we've ever had more than five from outside of the, uh, uh, the cold lakes coming in to uh, take our research, research classes, okay? But as soon as we get that scheduled out, we'll get it out for you. Uh, LGI and WSI courses are, will be announced as well. All right, the YMCA, check the YMCA in Sussex County here. They're gonna be running a uh, WSI course, they run those frequently, but the LGI courses, we only do that on demand. If we get if we get like four or five people, then we'll run an LGI class, all right? Uh, lifeguard recertification, again, it's unknown at this time, and we may have traveling LGI. We had, this, this was an idea that we came up. We have some LGIs that may not be coming back to Lake Momo, but they still wanna work. So what happened is that if we have a whole bunch of guys like at, at Culver Lake, all right, you have like six or more people, We'll send one of our instructors up there and, and instruct right on your site there. If you have, and so in Highland Lake, we'll do the same thing, going up to Vernon, rather than having everybody start coming down in this area. So we can divide up into little, little sections and we'll say, hey, listen, okay, Fall Skill Lake, and you can, can like people from like Islip or Cranberry Lake, and those guys all go to Fall Skill Lake. So we'll try to like regionalize them a little bit and say, um, so if you want to volunteer your site for this and you have some people, We'll have some traveling LGIs because LGIs are uh, um, are, are getting very scarce now. All right, uh, nobody's really taking the lifeguard instructor classes and WSI classes because it's cost it's it's very expensive to take the instructor courses. Um, okay, so we talked about this the lifeguard management certification. This was uh, um, in the state code. You have to have a what they call a pool directors certificate to manage a pool. It's in the code. Um, and what happens is that the only approved course in state of New Jersey is the Red Cross Lifeguard Management course. It's an eight hour course, you take it online. And then if you want, you, what you can do is you can take the state exam. But we strongly recommend it for the waterfront people. We had, I think we had six people as it. How, anybody in this room that took them last year? No, I guess it was the waterfront people. We had six people from a couple of different lakes came in and they thought it was great. And then they took the state exam. Again, what happens is it's required for pools. It is not required for waterfront, but we strongly recommend that you take this course. You can just do it online and not take the state exam. All right. So but, um, we're going to be offering the state exam um, uh, 
uh, if anybody wants it. We'll, we'll do that here, okay? So it's an online course, and a, like I said, the supplemental state written exam for certification. Now I find that. Okay. So lifeguard basic and research training, okay? You have to make sure, because we're pretty much all waterfront, that whatever lifeguard you hire has the waterfront module with it, all right? And that's a 36 hour course. That's the initial course is 36 hours. After that, it's only eight hours every two years, all right? And the CPR and the first aid research is every two years, and that is included in the waterfront lifeguarding course. However, bloodborne pathogens is required under OSHA, all right? And that is an annual certification. It only takes about an hour, all right? Unfortunately, I don't think you have an online course that you can do it online, all right? So you may have to have somebody come in and just teach that. So what happens is we pretty much just include that in the CPR. So we recertify our guards in Hill Lake Mall every single year. We include that, all right? So, but just remember that the bloodborne pathogens has to be renewed every single year. Yes, sir? Oh, I just had an itch? Okay. <laughs> all right. So, also what happens is that on your checklist, if you notice that when you have to do your, your preseason checklist and then send that into the, into the health department, you'll notice in, the, in little letters on the right-hand side on the bottom, there's a thing about uh, emergency drills and in-service training. You have to document that. Right? So you have to have um, in-service training and you have to have um, drills for your emergency service, like practice your emergency action plan and all that. And what happens is the industry, it doesn't say specifically in the code how many hours, but the industry nationwide is four hours per month. All right, so like you do two hours every two weeks. All right, so make sure that you test your water rescue skills each year prior to the start of the season, all right? As you know, I, I, do, I do investigations for insurance companies, um, for, uh, for attorneys, and, and in court cases I've had to do with drownings. I'm doing one right now, and the thing is that one of the things that, that the first thing we're going to look at is the training records and training certification and the in-service training records, okay? And so we want to make sure that you test these guys at the beginning of the season, whether the guy's been there for 10 years or whether he just came out of a a lifeguarding course that I just taught. We're going to test them, all right? So make sure that you test them because what happens is the certification that you get, all right? They have it. It says that I certified this guy on this particular day that on this day he knew all the skills. I can't guarantee that tomorrow, you know, he hit his head, he gets a concussion, right? And all of a sudden he doesn't know the stuff. I can't guarantee that, all right? So what happens is it's your responsibility to test your guards to make sure that they know what they're doing. All right, we went, we, every year we go to the Association of Aquatic Professionals and conference, and this year I did not go, but I attended uh, virtually, all right? So some of the things that, that came out of this that we, we, we try to bring back is the director school. So they just started it this year, and we thought it was fantastic. It was a very big success back there. So it's called the AOP um, director school, and the course is designed to provide a broad overview of aquatics, facility operation management, and staff training. And it was a three-day workshop basically for new people or for people who, who wanted to um, uh, upgrade their skills a little bit. And it teaches all about, actually this had to do more with pools than it does with waterfront, but, it, but the concept was very good. So now we're, we brought this back here to Jersey and now we're thinking about doing something similar here, but we're doing like, make a, like a one day thing. You know how we do that seminar for your waterfront directors in April, just before the season starts? It's only like maybe two hours, two and a half hours. Well now maybe we're thinking that, okay, for new waterfront directors, maybe we'll do a whole one day seminar and, and, and really go through the whole uh, PRB with them and everything, all right? Um, the topics would include effective team building, increasing retention, all right, that's one of the things. How do you, how do you keep your lifeguards from year to year? Typically, the lifeguards used to stay here, I mean, six, seven, eight years, we still don't have to kick them out, all right? If they graduate from college, you say, listen, you know, now it's time for you to, you know, Maybe go out, you know, the parents says, you got to get a and get a real job. <laughs> this was a real job. Yeah, you know, it was. It's just a real job. Uh, presentation skills, customer service, staff training, some legal cons considerations. Obviously, they go over pool chemistry. It has nothing to do with us. And then facility maintenance, code compliance, very big. And then leadership, right? How you have a succession plan. So the average guard used to stay about six, seven years. Now we're lucky we get three years out of them because what happens is that they... They have internships, 
Um, they're leaving for college and for school more often now, and uh, they get better, better paying jobs now. Okay, one of the other things that came out last year, and, it, and they have emphasized this year, at the beginning of every conference, we have a uh, orientation or a uh, recap from um, uh, our medical director. He, it's, uh, the guy is, I can't, I can't say his name, I think it's Dr. Selmage, it begins with that, I don't know. But anyway, the guy is fantastic, the guy is great. He goes on and he talks uh, and he addresses the entire conference, the place is packed, and he goes over all of the latest medical information that we need as lifeguards and as we need for the waterfront and what we should be looking for. Um, he's an emergency room physician and he's a consultant, he's the, uh, the head medical director for Starboard. So one of the big things is, is that, there, that, that, that we've been, we've been relaxing and not really realizing is that lifeguards are basically first responders and we're part of the EMS system, all right? So lifeguards are considered first responders under federal <coughs> regulations, they are you are. So remember when COVID started like two years ago, all right? And, we, and everybody had to get, they, they, they limited in how you get the, the vaccination, mm -hmm. all right? They're only giving it to certain people, they're only giving it to this certain age, whatever like this, they're only giving it to first responders. So what happened was, is that I wrote the paper and we submitted it to the state and what happened was it was accepted that lifeguards are considered, no matter what age they are, they're considered first responders so they can go to the top of the list to get their vaccination. So it worked, all right? So lifeguards are also considered part of the emergency medical system and that they provide initial care to the victims and patients. Think about this, all right? Police officers, we respond to calls. If we're, if we're on patrol, we might see something or rather, all right? Fire department, you have to have a fire before they're gonna come, all right? EMS, they're not gonna be running around if you have to call them before they come. But lifeguards are right there on the scene, all right? They're the ones who are watching and they're the ones who are gonna respond right away and pull the, pull the victim out of the water. All right, so the guards should be working very closely with your local EMS. And again, we stress this all the time. Think about this. We're in, in our lakes. We have very, we're very remote from where we are. How long does it take your EMS to get to your lake if something happens? How long? Anybody? Any, any more than ten minutes? Fifteen minutes? Twenty minutes? Okay. So what happens is we stress in our training. We stress in our training that those guards should be able to do CPR for that amount of time. All right. So if it takes ten minutes or fifteen minutes for your ambulance to get to your scene, they should be doing CPR for 15 minutes, all right? That's what they should be doing, and that's what they should be practicing. That's a great rainy day practice thing, all right? Come on. There we go, all right. Uh, new state regulation on first responder status, all right? This just came out from Governor Murphy a couple years ago. Defines a first responder as a police officer, firefighter, or other person who has been trained to provide emergency medical first response services in a program recognized by the Commissioner of Health. So what are those courses? These are the new courses that just came out, all right? Uh, the National Registry of Emergency Medical Responder Certification, AR, the, the Red Cross Emergency Responder Training Program and Certification, National Safety Council, and American Safety and Health Institute. All of them have the same course. These are like 40 to 50 hour courses. It's like a mini EMT course, because the EMT course is like, it's almost like 200 hours now, all right? And that's why we're not getting as many emergency mm -hmm. medical technicians anymore because the, the training is like 200, 225 hours, all right? To, to, and then to maintain your certification, you have to do this. This is only like 40 to 50 hours and they're, and you have to work with an EMT, but at least this way what happens is that they're, they're asking the lifeguard to do this. This is required in the state of California for all their lifeguards. All their lifeguards have to have this. They have to have the uh, emergency responder. Uh, certification. So they have to be 40 hours on top of their 40 hours of lifeguard training. Okay, so um, we, the aquatic safety seminar that we do every year for your waterfront directors, we want you to pass this on to them. This is a tentative date. We, we either have April 23rd or April 30th, whatever that uh, the last Sunday is. We're trying to make it earlier because what happens, we find that if it's too late in the season, you're, you're um, <coughs> You're, you're on the April because you have to, you have to put your, um, before you open up, you have to have your, your paperwork into the health department 21 days before you open up. 
all right? So some people open up before Memorial Day, some people on Memorial Day, all right? So uh, we're gonna try to move it up, all right? And see if we got a week. I sent out a survey to all our waterfront directors asking, is a weeknight better, <clears throat> a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning? And it was like, you know, half, half, like this, so we're just going to stay with this. All we did was just take it from the afternoon and just move it up to the morning, and we just moved up the date. That's all we did. Okay, our annual lifeguard competition. We're looking for a new venue, all right? Um, we had a great time last year. However, the water was extremely rough. As soon as Coleman Lake guys came down, they looked at the water and said, oh my God, it looks like the ocean. Um, so considering uh, uh, different dates, you know, like maybe in late July or early August, because what happens is we start losing our guards and they start going back into college and start going back to the sports teams, okay? Um, so we're looking for somebody else to help. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely help get, get people started. You can, you can borrow our equipment, we have no time, but we're just looking for like a change of venue to help maybe get more lakes involved and, and, and more lakes um, to come. Because sometimes it's like, if, you know, Culver Lake wanted to do it last year, which I thought was great and then they realized that the date that they picked was the same date as the opening day of the fair. And that, that was not gonna be good because it would take them people forever. They'd have, you'd have to close down your lake. If you're a white lake down in Rockaway, you'd have to you know, take you almost all day to get to that, uh, that traffic to get up to Culver Lake. So um, you have to think about trying to get it more of a central location, like maybe Green Pond, maybe White Metal Lake, or someplace like that. All right, but we want to move it around a little bit like that. Wait, yes, sir. And how many, how many people is that involved in terms of? We usually get we event? usually get like four teams, all okay. right? Uh, and then what happened was at the last minute, we had we had two teams pull out, so we had to make one up real quick, you know? The only expense, believe it or not, is just the t-shirts and the medals. Anything else is like, you know, optional, like, you know, like the food. And we had a lot of sponsors. We had a lot of sponsors that helped pay for that, all right? So, I mean, it's, it's designed to break even, that's it, you know? You, you plus or minus $10 you make, that's all. Um, so, and, and we have all the equipment, we're willing to lend you, lend you the equipment if you need it, like the rescue boards and, and, the, and the buoys and all that kind of stuff, whatever you need, all right? We'll help you with that. Um, these are just some pictures of, from last year's, and I have to tell you something, what happened here, all right? So, you see this right here, the mannequin? So what happens is one of the events is that we put the mannequins out, we sink them, and then the guards have to, you know, blow the whistle, and the guards have to run out, <clears throat> surface dive, pick up the mannequin, bring it back for their team, and then they do, like, you know, um, 10 minutes of team CPR. So what happened was the war was extremely rough that day, and one of the teams, what happened was their mannequin, when it went down, obviously on the way hit the bottom, floated away because the water was kind of rough. So they couldn't find it. The other two teams were already on the beach and doing CPR. They saw, without the judges even asking any questions at all, they saw that the other team was having a problem finding. They stopped everything they did, went out, did a, did a, a deep water line real quick, and within two minutes found that mannequin and brought it in and we started the competition all over again. They did it without even asking. Culver Lake, Lake Mohawk Guards, Lake Mohawk Pools, they all worked together. Without even being asked by any adults, they just automatically did it. That's how good these guys are, all right? That's what's worth more than $20 an hour, all right? Okay, so some resources that you can get, all right? Association of Aquatic Professionals and the National Drowning Prevention Association website. You, I think for the AOIP, you have to be a member to access their website and to access their, um, not access their website, but access their, their resources. But uh, under National Drowning Prevention Act, you do not, okay? You can, you can get that, that's all free. Um, there's aquatic talks on the internet. They started this during COVID. What happens is Texas has a very big one. They, they, I think they're every Wednesday. Washington State has theirs every Friday. Uh, at, at 12 noon our time, which is pretty good. But these are aquatic talks, and they, they talk about all the different things that come up on the internet and, and, uh, and problems that you might have. Uh, webinars, there's, there's certainly a lot of webinars that are out there now. Uh, the United States Life Saving Association Library is extremely good when you have to do with weather or um, COVID or with um, um, global warming pathogens. Very good about that. 
and you would have to have you have to be a, a member to, to access that library. The Red Cross, YMCA, Redwoods Group. Redwoods Group is fantastic. If you don't know about the Redwoods Group, the Redwoods Group is the largest insurance company that insures all YMCA's throughout the entire country, if not uh, in American territories. They have fantastic resources on there. You can download a whole bunch of stuff, all right, which is really good. And then obviously YouTube. YouTube is really good. I mean, you know, um, a lot of people are placing things on YouTube. We, we started putting stuff on YouTube. We put our uh, deep water backboarding uh, classes on, on, uh, on YouTube as well, all right? Um, Jersey Aquatic Safety Coalition, that's our email. If you, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email me and I'll get back to you right away. Everyone I mean, highly knows that I, I answer you all, all my emails and stuff like that. Uh, so I have no problem with that. And um, any questions on that so far? Yes? Hi, Rich, Christine, Lake Stockholm. You're right, you do get back right away. I'm grateful <laughs> for your okay. email answers. Um, what do we need, what equipment do we need to have accessible when we don't have life support on it? We're gonna go into that actually next year, next next month, all right? Um, I contacted, <laughs> we, have some, well, we, have, we have some good news, but the good news is that we now in Sussex County, we have a new health director, uh, Jennifer Shortino, who I worked with in the past and is, is a lot better than what we've had in the past, all right? So uh, she actually got back to me. I sent them um, a request asking for information if she could go over with me, because um, I, I was gonna do a PowerPoint thing on the, on the PRB. And um, she basically asked me to hold off because she may even come to the, are you ready for this? She may even come to the April meeting, so, uh, and, and address it. So that's why I wanted to hold off on that. But as far as the equipment, I think I, think I found a gray area about a special exempt facility where you only may have to only leave out a rescue, to, a rescue buoy, a rig buoy with a 60 foot one. Uh, you don't have to leave all the equipment out. As far as the other stuff, like uh, some of the questions came up, all right, special exempt facility. If we claim special exempt, can we still have lifeguards? All right? If we have lifeguards, we have to have the equipment. If you have lifeguards, yes, you have to have the equipment when the lifeguards are on duty. Mm -hmm. But you also have to post it and say Monday through Wednesday, Monday through Friday, we're special, we have no lifeguards on duty. When the lifeguards are on duty on, on Saturdays and Sundays, you have to post those hours. The lifeguards are only on duty from like 10 to 5. All right, and then they obviously have to have the equipment they have to, all the time. They have to. Also asked her, I sent her a whole list of questions, but the big thing, remember how the big thing was swimming at your own risk, you couldn't have those on your signs or whatever like that. Nowhere in the PRB does it say that you can't have that. And I don't think there's any attorney, not even the attorney general is gonna say that you can't have it. You just say, hey listen, my risk manager and my insurance company that insures us says that we have to have that. Eileen, would you say that you couldn't have swimming at your own risk on your signs? No, I mean, we looked at that. It, it's not part of the code, whether you have it or not. So and it doesn't it, say you have this language and only this language. It says you need to have the required language. Right, so that's it. So you can, you can add, you can't subtract, all right? You can make it more restrictive, but you can't make it less restrictive. Yes, ma'am. So what I'm hearing is throughout a seven day work week, we have swim at your own lake signs and lifeguard coverage five days of the week. That's okay. I can have days with no lifeguards and other days with lifeguards. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. So you can do that, but you have to. It's going to have to be spelled out on your sign with, with days and, and times. All right. The time and the days. Got it. With us, we have different coverage depending on staffing. So there may be sometimes we just don't have enough lifeguards that come in that day, so we have no lifeguards that be free that day. So we don't know that ahead of time necessarily. That so how do we post? That's what happens in in, um, in orders, you know, when it gets like right, right, right. All right. So what we did was I found this sign, and I don't have it with me, but we found this sign down the down the Jersey Shore, like down in Avalon and down there on all their beaches of the excess there, and it basically said that um, <coughs> I forget this. I'll have to get it. It's a sign. We we made them up. We put them on all the lifeguard chairs, and we put them on on the entrances, and it's a basically sign, it basically says that um, uh, swimming at, swimming alone is not, is, is not encouraged, um, 
you're, you're encouraged to swim in a, a man beach, and man beach is whenever the lifeguard chair is staffed. So if, it's, if it's, the lifeguard chair is not staffed, that means you're at an unmanned beach and you're swimming at your own risk. That's, I'm just paraphrasing it. Right, right. So they but we had those signs made up because what happens is like, we get a rainy day, right? right? And we send the guards back, right. and we send the guards home. Right, we take them. We take them to a central location. We do training, you know, rainy day training or whatever like this. Our beaches are on staff. So what happens is now that's kind of like a catch-all for us, right? I think we did run it by you. Remember, Eileen? I think we ran that sign by you. Yeah, but I can't remember the yeah, exact language. Yeah. But but we did run it. I mean, it's used down every single entrance down to the Jersey Shore down there had that sign. So right. you know what? It's good for them. It's good for us. The hours are inconsistent. I'm sorry. It's hard to post the hours because it's inconsistent. Right. Yeah. There, there, there were no hours on there. Oh, okay. No hours on that on that particular yeah. sign. It's not a state sign. Right. right. So we use that sign as you know, like as a catch-all that hey, listen, if there's life, there's no lifeguard in the chair, you're at an unstaffed beach, you're swimming at your own risk. Right. What's the minimum you would need if you didn't have a lifeguard? Do you need a throw rope with a buoy? That's what we're going to go into. That, I found that gray area, yeah. and I think it's going to be just a ring buoy with a, with a 60 foot line. I think that's going to be the so minimally, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's card. Yeah, because yeah. the thing is that you know when they tell us that you've got to leave all your rescue equipment out, right? And I had an inspector that you know she go, she's going to inspect the equipment. She doesn't even know what the this stuff is. Oh, no, we have those little pillow things. What pillow? What are you talking about? Yeah, you know, those things that go. What are you talking about? You know, and then, the, and then the noodle policy. That was a noodle, right? You needed a noodle policy. What noodle? Roman no, noodle, that noodle. What, what kind of noodle policy are you talking about? You, know, you show me the code, we'll comply. She couldn't show me. Well, it's in there someplace. Well, if you can't show it to me, then I don't have to comply. All right? So don't be intimidated. And the other thing is, too, is make sure that you keep every single inspection report from all the years back. Because what's going to happen is that he inspected you back two years ago. This guy inspected you last year. This guy, and all of a sudden, this guy tells you, and nothing's changed. Well, wait a minute. He passed me two years ago. This guy passed me last year. What's different? Nothing's changed. It's the same sign. You know. Mm -hmm. So make sure you keep those. And you show them. You say, listen, you're. Does she still work for you? Yeah. She passed me. Why? Why are you different from her? You know. You have to, and now they have to use the same. They have to use the same checklist, right? They can't be using the shortcut list. They have to use the same checklist all the time. Just make sure that you get a copy of that, hopefully before they leave, before they leave your site, right? Make sure that they get that you get the hard copy, right, right away. Um, okay, so let's have a good season. And now uh, I just want to introduce the uh, Jersey State Marine Bureau. I got.